President Adams, thank you so much uh, for the kind introduction. Thank you all for being here today. More importantly, thank you all for your service to your states and to our country. I've had an extraordinary opportunity over the last year to be not only have a front row seat to the pandemic, to be, to be absolutely intrinsically involved in delivering care to millions of people as they've sought to find their way through uh, what I hope is going to be a once in a lifetime experience. Medically, we've done great here in Utah, essentially the lowest per capita death rate in the country. More importantly, yes, this is good stuff. But that would have been a bankrupt victory if we didn't do it in conjunction with an incredibly robust economy. And I think you've heard statistics over the last day that suggest that, in fact, Utah has been a double winner. Great health care, great ability to navigate the pandemic, and a spectacular economy. And I'd like to take a moment to thank Speaker Wilson and President Adams, in particular, for their bold and courageous leadership on this front. Our partnership has been, at times, direct, not always in complete agreement, but always in the best interest of our neighbors. And I think net-net, we've come up with a great result. So, Speaker Wilson, President Adams, thank you very much for your leadership. Let me tell you a bit about Intermountain Healthcare, um, and I'll be pretty brief on this front. So we're based here in Salt Lake City, Utah. We were founded in 1975. We've got 24 hospitals. We serve millions of people across the seven states of the Intermountain West, either directly or via tele or via digital. We have 42,000 of the best human beings that you could ever imagine working for us, delivering high value, good quality, low cost healthcare. By the way, if any of you have extra nurses around, we could please send them out here. We could use them. We're, we're having the same nursing shortage that all of you are having. That said, our ability to innovate has allowed us to continue to operate uh, effectively throughout a very, very stressful time. Our mission at Intermountain Healthcare is to live the healthiest lives possible. And I'll talk to you in a moment about why that is special. We were asked in 1975 when the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints gave the original 15 hospitals to the community to be a model health system. We were not limited by geography. We were not, delivered, we were not limited by operating model. We were limited only by the necessity to serve everyone without regard for their ability to pay and our own imaginations. Every day we try and live up to that admonition. So I'd like for you all to ask yourself a big question. I suspect that in each and every one of your states, you have not-for-profit health care. And I think you should be asking yourself and the CEOs and boards of those organizations, what can we expect of you? This is a big question. It's an important question. The health of your communities depends on it. They need to recognize, as do we, our communities own us. We are here to serve them. We are here to reinvest in them. We are, there, we are here not just to cure them when they're sick, but we are here to keep them well. We are here to change the fabric of society around them in conjunction with others so that they can lead healthy lives. And by an extension of that, they lead productive and economically sound lives. We do not do this alone. We do this particularly with local and state partners, and we are very grateful for that. Here in Utah, the free market environment that has been created that has consistently opposed expensive provider mandates and unnecessary hospital licensure um, requirements, as well as other factors, has led to an incredibly robust healthcare economy that provides the people who live here in Utah with amongst the least expensive health care in the United States and the very best quality. We're lucky, but we've worked hard for that luck. Here's the big problem. Health care in America is broken. It's badly broken. 
It's 18% of our GDP. Other developed countries sit around 8 to 9% of GDP. We are great at high-end rescue care, the best in the world. We get lousy public health outcomes. 60% of Americans have a chronic health condition. This is one of the reasons why we've suffered so badly from a mortality standpoint during the pandemic. We know how to fix this. And Intermountain is a model for how that's done. Aligning incentives so that it works economically and medically to keep people well is the key. We have an insurance arm to our organization. That insurance arm allows us to make the right decision for the right person at the right place, at the right time, at the right cost. It allows us to not just keep people, um, not just take care of people when they're sick, but to keep them well. It also, by allowing us to be economically successful, we can reinvest in our communities. There's a very fine legislator who's here who just before this session asked me about a business decision we made. And he said, that feels like a very profit-driven decision you've made. And what I said to him is, we are not for profit, but that doesn't mean we don't want to make a profit. We invest that profit back into the community. Let me give you a couple of examples. Year on year, we provide 250 to 300 million dollars worth of charity care per year. About 500,000 free visits are provided by our system. That is good for our community. It also allows us to invest back in other ways. We identified that deaths of despair, including deaths from opioid misuse, were very high in the states we serve, just like in many of your states. Over the last two years, we have taken 10 million pills out of our communities based on changing uh, uh, prescribing um, approaches. We can do this. We don't need Washington, D.C. to tell us what to do. We know how to keep people well. Your not-for-profit health system should know how to do exactly the same thing. So let me talk for a second about rural health. Deserts exist in healthcare in the United States. People drive 100 miles in labor to try and deliver a baby in some parts of the country. Here in Utah, that's not so. Via tele and digital, we bring healthcare right to people's small towns. Their rural hospitals are generally the largest employer in their community and provide economic stability. Through tele, through digital, through charity, but more importantly, through alignment of incentives, we've managed to be one of four states in the United States not to have a rural hospital close in the last decade. We have no deserts in healthcare in Utah. You don't need to have them in your states either. So what can you expect of us? We should deliver on our mission. We should be good stewards of resources. We should invest back in our communities, and we should be good brokers in terms of being partners to all of you. We should tell you the truth about what we think. We should share with you the science as it exists. And we should always think holistically, not just from a narrow lens, about what is best for our neighbors. So on a number of occasions, and something that um, President Adams didn't share is, I've worked all over the world. In fact, I moved here from the Middle East. I moved here from Abu Dhabi, where I served for five years. They said, why did you come back to Utah where you trained? And I told them I loved this state. I believed in the values here. More importantly, I believe this is a platform to do good. Two years ago, almost exactly, I received the diagnosis of a fatal, incurable blood cancer, something called multiple myeloma. Some of you may know people who have this cancer. I had a decision to make. I had to decide, am I spending my life the right way? Are my relationships with my wife and family in good shape? Am I having fun? Am I making meaning? And the answer for me, working here at Intermountain Healthcare, transforming healthcare for the United States so that it is affordable and of high quality and respectful to our neighbors is exactly what I want to do. Happily, I'm in a complete remission right now. That doesn't change, thank you.
I want all of you to know that I'm lucky in so many ways, but one of the ways I'm lucky is as bad as that diagnosis was, as scary as it was, I never worried about losing my job, losing my home, or becoming bankrupt because I didn't have health insurance. We have an opportunity, you have an opportunity to influence the way your neighbors feel when inevitably they get a message like I do. Thank you for your service and God bless America. Please welcome back to the stage.